Welcome to the fourth installment of the Apple II Pie video series. Today I'm showing off the current state of the software and the integration of the Raspberry Pi with the Apple II hardware. What I have demonstrating right here is my Apple II workstation, my development workstation, and of course you see the monitor on top of the Apple II didn't actually ship the same time the Apple II did. This is running Raspbian, the Raspberry Pi version of Linux, on a somewhat modern flat screen, kind of tricked out to look like a actual piece of Apple II hardware, but it indeed it is not. Uh, together with the two floppy drives and the Apple Color monitor, you see the joystick there, the mouse down there. This is a bone stock Apple IIe. It does have a mouse card, a CFFA card for mass storage, as well as my Apple II Pi hardware plug-in with the Raspberry Pi hardware. So first off, I want to show the integration of the ProDOS devices with the Linux file system by way of a fuse driver. I'm sorry that this is a handheld video camera, but um, we're going to list the ProDOS directory and see that there's nothing in there. We'll mount the fuse driver and load in all the devices from the Apple II. And as I do this, you'll see the uh, floppy drives get accessed as it reads the volume information, as well as the uh, CFFA, which you cannot see because it's plugged in. And as soon as uh, all the Linux drivers load, now we see we have a populated ProDOS directory with volume names of all the ProDOS volumes. Plus down here we have some raw device files uh, listed as slot and disk numbers with a .po extension. And the reason for that will become clear in a moment. I'm going to bring up another window and I'm going to show off what I call A2 term. Now what this is, believe it or not, AppleSoft running on the Apple II. And I have a program here that simply prints out the two version, uh, two uh, axes of the joystick in an infinite loop. Now take note that over here I have my Apple Color Monitor that is plugged in directly to the output of the Apple II. The flat screen is the output of the Raspberry Pi, so the, the two computers have separate outputs. But notice that as I type in my Apple II or the A2 uh, term window, look what shows up on the Apple II. It may not uh, quite make it. But the A2 term program is basically just mirroring the output on the Apple II. When I run this, you will see both of them are displaying the values of the joystick. And as I take the joystick, let me see, I can move it around, the values change. And they're both in sync. So that's just kind of reflecting into a Linux 
terminal window, the Applesoft window. Let me just break in there. See, we've broken there, and we've broken there. Now, where it gets interesting is, I'll bring up the Apple II GS emulator called GS Port. And what I've done with this emulator, here's the configuration file, where it maps the drives for the emulator. Now I've mapped here my standard, my GSOS image file, a 2MG image file, but down below here on the ProDOS, ProDOS directory I have my raw device file that actually maps to the physical CFFA card inside the Apple II. As I bring up the GSO uh, port emulator, it loads GSOS quite much fast, much faster than, than a real GS. shaky hand here, I apologize. So there's the drive for the GSOS, but I also have, with this icon, my CFFA card, which actually is live. This is a live reading and writing of the CFFA card. Now I want to show off, running in basic here, I have saved basically the same program you just saw me running, whoops, I spelled it right, again here is the same program that prints out the joystick values infinitely. Now I'm going to run this. Now this is the emulator, mind you. Now take note. I'm using my Apple II joystick and as I change it, so change the values that the emulator sees. So what I've done is I've actually written a Linux joystick driver for Apple II Pi, which turns my physical Apple II joystick into a Linux joystick which is then interpreted by the emulator and turned back into an emulated Apple II joystick. So kind of a long way to go around it, but believe it or not, I now have my physical Apple II joystick working inside the Apple II GS emulator. Okay now, so this is where it gets a little funky. I'm going to switch back to my Apple II term. Now mind you, this is all running on a one single Apple II E. Just an 8-bit 6502 at 1 megahertz. Running all these device drivers. Now I'm going to run the same program but on the actual Apple II hardware. Now let's see if this shows up. But as I change this, both the real Apple II program and the emulator are reflecting the values of the Apple II joystick in parallel. The poor little Apple II is not only running its own little AppleSoft program to print out the joystick values, but so is the emulator. And the 6502 is also providing the values for the emulator. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and just to prove it, there is the output of the Apple II actually changing along with the values being displayed on the X desktop. So that's a pretty uh, nice piece of um, multitasking for the poor little 6502. Now while that is all running, Let me go back here. These are all running. I'm going to, under Unix here, list 
the floppy disk under Unix and while this is all running on the Apple II its floppy drive starts up. Everything takes a little bit of a pause but now I get the listing from the floppy in my Linux terminal. I have uh, given the names uh, a little extra information from ProDOS so that I can uh, copy them to other file systems and we're still seeing our joystick values change all concurrently. All right. We'll stop that one. Stop this one. last thing I want to show off is for uh, some development purposes is how this really improves how you can develop code under Linux and then run it directly on the Apple II. So I have exited Apple II term back to my Linux uh, command line here and this is a uh, the development directory I have of uh, basically my Escape from the Homebrew Computer Club uh, game which I've uh, massaged slightly for a high-res uh, version with uh, real-time 2D mapping. So this will, using uh, some bload and brun commands, allow me to instantly copy code and data right to the Apple II and then run it directly on the Apple II. So this loads stuff right in the Apple II's memory and then runs it and then there's the Apple II now running my code. And so this is, uh, if any of you remember what app, uh, Escape from the Homebrew Computer Club, this is a uh, high-res kind of version and on the right you see a a real-time 2D map being uh, generated as the uh, Raycaster determines what you've seen. So it kind of fills in the map as you go along. It's a quite a bit slower in high-res than it was in low-res. But then you can see the map fill in as I turn. The map kind of fills in. Yeah, it's kind of neat. But it was a much easier development process given that I could develop right on uh, Linux using all the modern tools and editors and then immediately run it on my Apple II. Now, while this is running on the Apple II, my Linux desktop is kind of on hold here. Uh, the mouse does not move uh, because this is running the entire uh, Apple II. It's not able to kind of multitask anymore. So, but what I'll do is I'll exit out, returning control back to Apple II Pi. My mouse is all active again, and I have my keyboard back. just right where we left off. So I can uh, exit everything back out. I can even go back to the uh, GS desktop if I so choose. In the emulator, everything is still right where I left off. And There we go, back to our original desktop, right uh, uh, where we started from. So all this is available uh, on the GitHub site that I will post on this uh, video link. 
And I hope you enjoy it and I hope some of you actually get a chance to try it out and, uh, and enjoy it. Again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.